Hi guys, this is Dustin, and welcome to the next episode in this Love 2D tutorial series. So before we get started, um, I just want to say that um, in my previous video I did mention that this uh, upcoming video would be a devlog, but I decided to push that back just a little bit because I really want that de devlog to be uh, really good quality. So I, need, I just need a little bit more time to really polish up the demo and get things working a little bit better. But yeah, today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on user inputs, so and input management in general. So uh, input is one of the most fundamental important things in any game engine, in any game, right? Uh, it's the basic interaction between the user and uh, what's going on. So right here, um, I just want to demonstrate some of the forms of input in love. Uh, this one right here is just the simple uh, is key down. Um, and you've probably seen this before. Uh, so if I just hit A right here on this play with this player, uh, the player will move to the left. And uh, the reason why this works is, uh, the way this function works is uh, it checks the keyboard and, and if the key A is pressed down, it will always run the snippet of code rate in, in the body right here. It will always return true. So uh, that's really useful for things like movement, but oftentimes we want to be able to just click a key and hold it down but only have an action fire once. Think of clicking a button or think of an attack that you only want to happen once per key press. So now Love2D actually does provide us a mechanism to do this, and that is the love.keypress function right here. But to actually use this, you have to uh, basically create the function out, and um, let me just demonstrate it right here, and it does exactly what we expect. So if I press A, we'll see that uh, it gets called once, and let me do that one more time. Uh, let me close this, sorry. Let me close this and restart. <laughs> Alright, let's try this again. So if I hold down D, you can see that I'm holding down D, but uh, in the terminal, D is only uh, printed once. If I do it again, only once. Do it again, only once. So that's useful except for the fact that we have to, basically, uh, we can only handle it, uh, that key press, within this function right here. So what if we wanted to be able to say, I don't know, if is pressed. Well, we won't be able to do this because this function actually does not exist in the Love2D standard. So why don't we create this function? Um, and then one thing I want to mention is after this, we're going to be creating a full-on uh, input manager so that users can uh, edit what keys, uh, remap their keys, and all that. But for now, we're just going to implement this isPressed function. So I have this uh, file right here, just a blank Lewis script called input. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to in extend, uh, you might not be able to see this, we're going to be able to. We're going to extend this love.keyboard. Um, this love.keyboard object right here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do love.keyboard. Dot is pressed. We're going to make that equal to a function, uh, and that function is going to take in a key. So we're just going to name that k. Now to be able to make this work, we actually have to store the previous and the current state of the key that we're uh, checking. So let's create a local table called key states, and we're going to. Uh, set that to an empty table for right now. Now in here, we're going to check to see uh, what the current state of this uh, key is. So we're going to call that variable now. We're going to say local now is equal to love.keyboard.isDown and we're going to pass in k. So if the key is pressed, if it's held down, it will return true. And then what we're going to do is we're going to check if that the key is currently in our key states table. So we're going to say key states Okay. If it is in the table, then what we can do is we can actually grab the last key state. Remember, like I said, we're going to store the current key state and the previous key state in this table. Alright, and then we're going to set the key states, uh, the key, the current key to uh, the current state to now, like this. Um, and then the last thing that we're going to do is actually return. So we need to return uh, either true or false. So we know the key was pressed and not held down if the current state is true, but the previous state was false. So we're going to return now and not last, just like that. All right, so let's handle the case where uh, the, key st uh, the key is not present in our key states table. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to uh, create a new entry for it. 
so we're gonna set uh, the key states uh, at uh, key uh, key equal to a new table. And we're gonna say now is equal to now, and last is equal to false, because um, yeah, we're gonna set that to false because it's the first time that we actually press down the button, so it should be the last state would when it's impossible for it to be true, and then we're just gonna return now. All right, so. If we actually run this right now, right now we're gonna pay attention uh, to the term uh, console. If I press D, you can see that uh, D is just spanned. It's not working correctly, and that is because we need to set the last value equal to now at the very end of our frame. So we're gonna create a new function: love.keyboard.resetKeyStates. We're gonna set that equal to um, a function, and we're gonna say for k. And then we're going to ignore the uh, second uh, parameter. So the second parameter would be the actual value. It would be uh, this table right here. We're going to just ignore it. We're going to uh, say in um, pair, uh, pairs, and then we're going to iterate over key states. So what this is going to do is this is going to iterate over all the keys in this key states table. And then we're going to say key states at index key uh, dot na uh, last is equal to key states at index k dot now. All right, so let's not forget to actually run this. So I'm gonna move this out of the way for now. Over here, I'm gonna say love dot keyboard dot uh, reset key states at the very end of this update function. And we only wanna do that in this update function. All right, so let's run it. So if I click D, you can see that I'm holding down, maybe I can show you the camera right here, I'm holding down D, and the key is uh, only uh, printed, D is pressed once. So that's exactly what we were looking to do. Now why don't we do uh, a released function, so it would only fire once we release the key. So to do that, it's the exact same function, let me bring this over just to make sure you can see it. I have a widescreen monitor, so um, it's wider than 1080p, so I'm trying to figure out how to actually manage that with, with the video. But yeah, we're just going to copy the function exactly. We're going to name it uh, is key released. Now down here, we actually want to switch the not. If the last state was yes, true, that means we were holding on the key. But if the current state is false, that means the last frame, or it means the <laughs> it means that the current frame uh, the key is up, but the last frame the key was down. So we're going to say not, just like that. All right. So now if we go down here, we can say changes to released, and let's see if this works, fingers crossed. So if I press D, uh, nothing is printed, here, D, uh, it's only printed when I release the key, so I'm holding it down right now, and as soon as I release, it says D is released. Very cool. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do, like I said, uh, we're going to create a set of actions. So instead of direct, like in our code, in our player code, instead of directly checking if a key is down, why don't we check if an action is, uh, like if an action happened, like we are, we want to move left, or we want to actually get uh, which access we're trying to move in, which direction, and just have the input manager handle uh, which keys that we uh, want to actually uh, check. That way we can have the user remap their uh, input to whatever they want. So up here we're going to create a uh, uh, we're going to create a table called actions, and we're going to have um, let's say attack be an action, and we're going to set that equal to let's just make it k uh, key z sure. Uh, we're going to create an action called jump. Let's just make that equal to the spacebar. And um, we're going to have uh, move left, B, uh, A, and let's just make move right, and we're going to make that key uh, D. All right. What we're going to do is we're just going to create a global function right now. If you'd like to make this private, go ahead. Um, it might be better practice, but for now I'm just going to make a global function. And we're going to call this function, uh, let's just call it uh, get direction. Uh, moved or maybe get direction Delta all right and we're gonna just 
uh, make this function take no parameters. So basically, what I want to be able, to, what I want to make this function do is, if I uh, do click, let's say a for move left. If I try to move left, what this function is going to do is it's going to return a minus one, and we can use that minus one to uh, multiply the velocity. That way, uh, we'd be moving to the left, right? Because if you uh, move towards the left, you'll be moving towards zero. Um, and then if we're if the key, let's say D is pressed, then we're going to return a positive one. And then same with um, uh, up and down. If we press W, we're going to make it so that uh, you return a negative one for that. Um, let's actually implement up and down as well. Why not? And we're going to set up, move up to something not surprising like W and then S. So uh, what we're doing right here is we're making it so that you can uh, change this value to whatever you want, right? You can change this to a Q. Um, you can have the user uh, reset this to whatever they want. Um, so that just creates a lot of flexibility. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if love.keyboard keyboard that is down and then we're going to say actions dot let's say move actually I don't think I can have this minus sign right here we're going to say move uh, left so if the move left action happens and then what we want to also do is uh, delta let's create a table right here x is equal to 0 y is equal to 0 um, we're going to say delta dot x is equal to negative 1 all right now we're going to say uh, change move change it to move right over here and if it's move right then delta x is going to be 1 now we're going to do the same thing for moving up we're going to say delta y is equal to negative 1 and then move down and that's going to be positive 1 so now what we can do over here is we can just get rid of all this input right here we're going to say local delta is equal to get direction delta and I don't think delta direction delta is a great name but um, if you guys think of a different one go for it please change it anyway we're going to say player dot vx so vx is the velocity it's equal to player dot vx uh, plus delta dot x times dt times let's just do a hundred I think that'd be a or actually let's do a thousand I think that'd be a better speed whoops and now we're gonna do the exact same thing for y so velocity y it's gonna be uh, we're gonna add delta y uh, times dt times a thousand so if you look over here we set these default to zero so this will the velocity set will just get uh, nothing will get added to it because this will just multiply out to zero but if we press the left action, then this will be negative one. And then that way we will be multiplying this by negative one. So it'd be minus uh, DT times a thousand. So let's see if this works. Let's run uh, this project. Uh oh, we got an error. So input line four, let's check this out. And I think I am doing this wrong. Oh, <laughs> okay. So. In my day job, I am a JavaScript developer, and JavaScript has a different syntax to Lua when it comes to its objects. So I just need to change these colons to uh, equal signs. Okay, attempt to index local delta nil value. Are we not returning it? We are not returning delta. So we want at the very bottom, bottom right here to return delta. All right, so let's give this another shot. All right, so everything looks like it's working right now, and I'm clicking WSD, and we are moving. All right, sweet. All right, so the last thing I want to do is add joystick support. All right, so first things first, let's see how many joysticks that we actually have. Joystick dot uh, get joysticks. All right. So now I want to say if uh, joysticks, um, and I should mention that joysticks are your uh, your controllers, and I have this uh, GameCube controller because I love the GameCube controller a lot. I, I just have this plugged into my computer right now through a dongle. Um, so we're gonna check if the number of joysticks connected is greater than zero, and and then we're gonna actually grab out the first joystick, and actually we're gonna do this all in one line. So we're gonna say uh, x axis. 
So we're going to check the x-axis, whether um, how far uh, from 0 to 1 this uh, joystick is from the center. So to do that, we're going to just do uh, joysticks at index 1 dot get axis, and the x-axis is x axis 1. All right, let's do the same thing for the y-axis, and that's axis 2. So now if we print x-axis and y-axis, let's see what we get. Now if I rotate this, uh, let's see, uh, pay attention to the x-axis. As I move this closer to the edge, um, let me move my mouse, closer to the edge, it gets closer to negative 1 as I move it closer to the left. If I move it closer to the right, it goes towards 1. And then same with the y-axis, just like that. So what we can do now is just set delta x to x-axis and delta dot y to y-axis. And because of the way we set this up, we actually have uh, really nice smooth controls now. So as I move it, uh, we'll be moving really slow if I just barely move the joystick. But if I move it a lot, we'll be moving faster. So we got that really nice analog control. Anyway guys, that's all I have for this video. Um, we might go into depth a little bit further later on, but for now, you know, I think this gives us a good, ba uh, you know, a good starting point for uh, more complex um, input management. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed the video, please leave a like and please subscribe, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.